Chapter 2 Medical and Social Needs of Home Care Clients Outline 1. Introduction 2. Basic Physical and Emotional Needs of Clients 3. Recognizing the Role of HHA 4. Relating Client and Family Rights to Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs 5. Culture, Lifestyle, and Life Experiences 6. Common Reactions to Illness slash Disability 7. Description of basic body functions and changes that should be reported. 8. Diseases and disorders common in the healthcare clients. 9. Common emotional and spiritual needs. 10. Conclusion Medical and Social Needs of Home Care Clients 1. Introduction the home health aide has the role of assisting the client and family in managing the condition of health at the client's home. This chapter will describe the needs of the clients, explain the role of home health aide, and relate the rights of the client and family to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It will also discuss culture, lifestyle, and experiences of clients while identifying common reaction to illness or disability, outline body functions, diseases and disorders, and emotional or spiritual needs of patients. 2. Basic physical and emotional needs of clients. Home health aides help clients who have diverse needs so that they feel comfortable and obtain assistance. They include the elderly, infants, mentally ill, people with physical and developmental disabilities, together with people with nutritional needs. Majority of the clients require physical assistance in form of service. They often require to be bathed, dressed, and given a hand to conduct self-grooming. The client needs to be assisted to wash their hands and perform hygienic tasks to control infections. They need someone to support them as they manage pain. The urinal system may be causing incontinence, and they will need someone to help them. Harris, 2004, page 5. Clients may have nutritional requirements. The home health aide will assist in making the right combination of food and serve them. Those with skin ailments or wounds require help to take care of the skin and the wounds. The home health aide may be required to change the dressing at the right time. It is within the scope of home health aids to change simple dry dressings. However, more complex dressing changes would require a licensed nurse. The disabled and the elderly may have muscular skeletal system problems. They will need someone to assist them in mobility. The bedridden will require someone who understands the best position when turning them in bed or moving them to another location. The HHA will give a hand in ambulation and motion. The client will be in need of a safe environment. The home health aide makes the environment safe for the client. They can clean and arrange their house. Edelman and Modell, 2010, page 22. As an important member of the home health team, the HHA is involved in organizing and arranging appointments for the client. Organizing entails arranging the means of transportation and accompanying the client to their appointments. At times, she slash he assists in doing shopping and cooking appropriate food for the client. They provide company for the client. They keep track of medication taken and appointments with the doctors. They also facilitate the client to participate in certain activities as well as exercise. Because they work under the supervision of a registered nurse, the home health aides are required to report on the progress of their client. They can be shown to check respiration rate and temperature for the purpose of giving a report. They follow the care plan in assisting the client with medication reminders to ensure that the client is complying with the medication regimen. According to Arani, 
1989, page 77, the client needs to be assisted in lifting and coordinating activities. They need someone to provide physical and emotional company. They call in for help in case of emergencies. Clients in home health care need emotional support from the home health aide. This can be achieved if they talk to them, share stories, read books, and listen to them. Emotional support is needed by the client as they cope with their condition and situation. The family, too, needs emotional support. Families living with the mentally ill patients, disabled and terminally ill, need encouragement. The newborn can be delicate to handle, and people may not be sure how to treat them. The caregivers for the infant may have physical and mental constraints. Emotional support also includes taking the client for recreational activities, walking, and accompanying them when they ask. 3. Recognizing the Roles of HHA Home health aides have the responsibility of ensuring that the client is safe and receives adequate care according to the agreement between the home health agency and the family. Every home care client reserves the same patient's rights as those being cared for in the hospital. The client or family has the right to be involved when treatment is being planned. They should be given adequate information on the available services and plans as well as how to gain access or terminate the services. The criteria for eligibility should be clearly outlined. The patient should be made aware of their responsibilities. Services provided should be safe and appropriate. The services should also comply with current medical information. Communication should be efficient to allow the patient to know when there are changes in services, schedule, and medication. The patient and their family require to be given respect and privacy by the home health aid. The medical information should be kept confidential. The client and their family should not be exploited, mistreated, or made uncomfortable. The home health aid can develop a disciplined way of dealing with the patient. For instance, they should avoid yelling, smoking, or ignoring the patient. The patient should be informed about changes in payment when payment is adjusted. The information should be given in advance before changes are made. Another role of the home health aide is giving quality health care. They should respond to the patient's queries appropriately and in time. Services should be of good quality and should be available when required. Quality of health care is informed by health care standards and regulations. In case the patient's status is not improving, the home health aide should ensure that they report the progress of the client to the appropriate institution in time. They should be prepared to support and assist the client in the case of emergency. They should inform the patient and family on the necessary procedure and what has caused the action. It is the home health aide's duty to ensure they make arrangements together with the patient or family to have the appropriate resources needed. When any service is beyond the scope of the HHA, the registered nurse, usually called the case manager, should be informed. In the case of absenteeism, the home health aide should inform the home health agency, patient, or family in advance. They should be cleared if they have terminated the services, are on leave, or will come after some time. The home health aide should cooperate and partner with the client and family to provide care. They should not be discriminatory about their religion, culture, gender, or race. Being in constant contact with the patient gives them the opportunity to establish a relationship with the client to create a good avenue for bringing in emotional and physical support. 4. Relating Client and Family Rights to Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs is an analysis of human needs. 
Maslow proposes that people chase the fundamental needs first and proceed to successive needs to form a hierarchy. Maslow, 1970, page 37. When self-actualization needs are met, the person is believed to have acquired growth. Satisfaction of needs is attained as level in hierarchy is accomplished. Therefore, the bottom level in the hierarchy contains the most important needs, while the highest level contains the less important needs. The first level at the bottom of the hierarchy is the physiological level. It entails needs such as water, food, rest, sleep, and sex. The client and their family in home care are entitled to the basic needs related to homeostasis. The client, whether elderly, disabled, convalescent, or infant, should be entitled to access the required food, clean water, and get assisted in case their conditions require oxygen administration. Those are basic requirements for sustenance of life. The second level from the bottom of the hierarchy is the safety level. The safety needs include health, environmental safety, availability of resources, and employment. The clients and their families have the right to enjoy good health. They have a right to a secure environment and not to be exposed to danger. The availability of resources enhances the security of the client and their family. Clients have a need to restore their health and live without ailments. In case they are infants and disabled, they need to be prevented from exposure that could lead to poor health, injuries, sickness, or harm. The family and client need medication and a safe environment where they can be comfortable and secure. They need to be assured that procedures and services offered when receiving home health care are safe. The third level from the bottom of hierarchy is the belonging level. People have a desire to feel that they have friends, feel loved, and belong to a family. The family of the client should be encouraged to give support to the client. Emotional support from the home health aid will facilitate the feeling of belonging to the client and the family. The client and the family have a right to express and to be shown love. Every human being is entitled to be treated with respect and dignity. Politeness should be exercised when dealing with the client and family. The fourth level is called self-esteem. Esteem needs include respect, accomplishment, self-esteem, and confidence. The client and the family need to experience respect from the home health care team. The home health aide must exercise reverence as they give service. Insult, disrespect, and a lack of kindness could be considered a violation of their rights. When respect is not granted, the patient may lack confidence and lose self-esteem. Maintaining self-esteem will provide a platform for giving emotional support. Esteem is one of the important needs when it comes to mental, physical, social, and emotional needs. The topmost level is self-actualization. The needs are reflected on morality, ability to make decisions, and renewal of mind. Morality and ethical considerations of the client and family must be considered. There are professional ethics and laws that are provided for the home health care which must be observed. The home health aid will provide all the information concerning the treatment plan, condition of the client's health, and notify them when there is a change in schedule, treatment, or payment. The home health aide will ensure that they do not withhold important information on emergency or change in health that requires immediate attention. 5. Culture, Lifestyle, and Life Experiences Understanding the culture, experience, and lifestyle of the client and family will enable the home health aide to learn the preferences and attitudes when giving their service. 
belonging to a specific community, religion, or any group of people is not a good way of establishing the reasons for the client and their family's behavior. Decision-making should be based on their choices and attitude. Culture, lifestyle, and life experience dictates what values the clients and the family has. It is necessary to observe the relationship of the client and their family. Cultural values could affect choices of health in different patients. For instance, some ailments or disabilities may be associated with negative meaning. People vary in experience because they grow up and live in diverse regions. Understanding their lifestyle could give ideas if their ailment could have been caused by their choice of lifestyle. Cultural values could give ideas on how to treat an elderly person. Furthermore, it will give information on the kind of language to be used. This could bring in new ideas, like introducing an interpreter. It is not advisable to touch every object one sees in a client's home, as some objects may hold sacred significance. When an HHA is assigned to a client, it is the professional duty of the HHA to familiarize themselves with the family. For example, ask how the client prefers to be addressed. For some individuals, addressing them by their first name or other pet names, like Honey or Sweetie, may be insultive. Wernig and Sorrentine, 1989, page 81, note that people value culture and respect it. Culture is the sum total of the way of life of an individual or a group of people. The home health aide should show respect to the client's culture and desist from ethnocentrism, which means thinking that one's culture is superior to another person's culture. The more respect and cultural diversity observed, the more comfortable the client and their family will be with the agency. Failure to recognize their cultural values and beliefs could lead to mistrust. Obviously, this can be avoided. The home health aide can engage into a relationship with the client and the family to find out what their feelings are and if they are exercising any fear about the client's condition. Treating a person with dignity and giving quality care could be seen as a significant way of giving value to the client. Identifying cultural prejudices is an effective way of becoming culturally aware. When one pays attention to their beliefs and cultural practices, they choose to adjust their behavior to treat them right. It is very easy to say to oneself, I respect other people's culture. This section of the book is not for me. But take time to ask yourself the following questions. How do I feel when someone who has a different accent speaks to me? Do I feel my food is superior when I perceive the odor of foods from other cultures? Do other people's dressing make me uncomfortable? Do I feel people do not know what they believe just because they do not believe in my own God? Depending on an individual's culture, lifestyle, and experience, the home health aide should assess beliefs about sickness and death. They contribute to understanding attitude toward health, attitude on the service of the home health aide, alternative ways of gaining health, religious beliefs, family influence, communication, and the client's opinion about their health. Because of lifestyle and life experience, the client and family may have perceptions about medical care and home health care aids. They may have negative or positive experience with the health care system. Negative experience could cause a client who is elderly or disabled to refuse to cooperate. One can also establish the decision-making of the family. There are cases where the family male head makes decisions, while in other families, members discuss and give a common answer. The client may be able to give their decisions, and they should be considered. Matters of religion can play a major role in the way the client and family perceives illness. While some may reject some treatment and choose other alternatives, others believe in supernatural power of healing. 
depending on experience and culture, clients and family will have diverse response to the home health care. In order to explain the effect of culture on illness, let me discuss a bit about the Igbo culture in Nigeria, West Africa. The Igbo culture. The Igbo people, usually called Igbo by non-Igbos, are situated in the southern region of Nigeria in West Africa. The area is divided by the Niger River in two unequal sections, the eastern region, which is the larger part, and the midwestern region. The global health case studies states that according to Nigeria's national census, 1991, the Igbo culture group accounted for 25 million of the 88.9 million people in the country. The Population Reference Bureau updates that Nigerian population had increased to 140 million in 2006. And the southern states, of which the Igbos constitute a large part of, accounted for 65 million. The Igbos speak the Igbo language, and they have two major religions, Christianity and traditional religion. Christianity is the belief in Jesus as the Son of God and Lord, while their traditional region is the worship of idols. Believing that many of the idols are small gods that point to Chukwu, meaning the big god. The Igbos are known to value education, hence in the present day Igbo culture, the minimum education one would have is the high school certificate. Actually, high school graduates are considered illiterates. Their staple food is gary, which is processed from cassava. It could be drunk as a cereal or baked into cakes. But the most common way of eating it is to make it as a dough and eat it with different kinds of soups, mostly vegetable-packed soups. Other staple foods are rice and yam, to name a few. The cultural practices of the Igbos include the New Yam Festival, which is usually celebrated around October of every year when the new yam is harvested. Igba Nikwu Nuwanyi, meaning pouring wine for the bride. This is the name given to their costly marriage ceremony, where the groom has to spend the savings of a long period to get married. This usually contributes to the longevity of the Igbo marriages. If unfaithfulness is noted, or other conflicts, and the lady decides to go home to her parents, another ceremony is performed. This practice has helped couples to resolve their differences on time before it gets out of hand. Of course, there are several other practices which the scope of this paper will constrain me to write. The health beliefs of this ethnic group in relation to the health and illness include the following. That most illnesses are caused by one's enemies who submitted their names to evil spirits. That some illnesses are a reward of one's evil doing in the past. That evil spirits could be appeased to cure mysterious illnesses. That health is a gift from God, Chuck Wu, and should be maintained by good food so the eating of fruits and vegetables is usually the norm, as these vegetables are mostly grown from family gardens that are not bought in the market. Even if they are bought, they are very affordable. The husbands should stick to their wives sexually to prevent nisi nuanyi, meaning mysterious illness gotten from woman. This is the common name for sexually transmitted diseases. The use of local herbs to cure illnesses which have been proven to be effective over the ages. The specific health and illness needs of the Igbo people include Lack of portable drinking water. Water is usually bought from some rich people that installed boreholes systems. The public tap water, which is the main source of water supply and is not usually maintained by the government because of misappropriation of funds. This water problem is usually worse during the dry season, because during the rainy season, the source of water supply is usually rainfall. Most families are low-income earners, and the staple foods, which are gary, yam, and rice, are usually costly. So undernourishment is usually a problem which could be solved by the assisted nutritional services, 
like food stamps or free food programs. The main disease or illness suffered by this group is malaria, but there have been many resources and curative measures available, so mortality from malaria is almost a thing of the past. According to a global health case study, agriculture is a heritage occupation and remains quite traditional with small-sized farms and rain-fed crop production. All crops cultivated are used as food. Nonetheless, both protein energy and micronutrient deficiencies are a public health problem. Overcrowding is a major problem as people are overcrowded in cars, schools, and living places. This usually aids in the transmission of infectious diseases easily. A majority of the Igbo people suffer and die from stroke since healthcare is not affordable for early diagnosis of the illness. And to make it worse, when somebody slumps on the way in a real village setting, no help is called for as it is believed that the evil spirits tormenting the individual would start tormenting the helper. This is recently improving with the continuous health education on heart attacks and strokes. Road traffic accidents, RTA, is one of the major causes of death in this area because of lack of proper driving regulations. A health education research supports this by stating that data taken from admissions records to the hospital and private clinics, the three facilities which treat accidents, show a similar dominance of RTAs. All entries relating to unintentional injuries were extricated for one year, from March 1993 to March 1994. Ninety-nine entries were recorded, of which 63 were injuries caused by RTAs. Their ways of meeting healthcare needs include the following. Since there is no health insurance, and health delivery is usually based on availability of cash payment by the patient, people usually go to the hospital when they are really sick. This aids in a high rate of mortality level because in some cases, the illnesses are at their end stage. It is thanks to the government of the Igbo people that both over-the-counter drugs and prescription drugs can be gotten over-the-counter even with no prescription and medications are sold relatively cheap, far cheaper than what they would be sold for here in the United States. Hence, antibiotics, anti-malarial drugs, and most common drugs can be easily bought, and one follows the dosage on the drugs. If not for this, millions of people would have died because they could not afford hospital bills. Many deliveries are done by experienced traditional midwives of people that have had some background in health care, and this is done either in their homes or in some small private clinics. This reduces the cost of childbirth, and pregnant mothers are usually referred to the hospitals if their pregnancy is complicated. The negative effect is that many babies are lost, and some mothers do not make it to the hospital. Apart from traditional midwives helping in deliveries, they also help in circumcision of males. There are also herbalists that are known and proven to use herbs to cure illnesses. Some herbs like acum shutup are grown by most people in their backyard. Acum means malaria. Shutup is in an English language. This herb is very bitter, but when soaked in water and drunk, cures malaria. Keep in mind that malaria is the most common illness in this culture. Although the fatality has been greatly reduced because of availability of its cure in various ways. Some areas of conflict between cultural practices and the healthcare delivery system include the following. The strong belief that one's illness is caused by one's enemies prevents people from seeking healthcare delivery because it is believed to be useless in such cases. Many people die because of this belief. The smuggling in of herbal preparations into the hospitals usually affects real assessment of the success of the treatment plan. Usually, nurses make it a routine to search patients' surroundings to make sure there are no hidden preparations. Some people do not want to be blamed for not going to the hospital, so they go 
but cheek their medications and throw them away when the nurse leaves the room, fake recovery after two or three days from admission, and go home. This could either be from believing in a non-scientific origin of the illness or other personal beliefs. It is usually a thing of pride to have a non-eventful pregnancy, which is crowned by a vaginal delivery of the baby. Hence, many women try everything they can to have vaginal delivery to maintain their ego, as people who have not gone through normal delivery and gone through the pains of childbirth are not real women. Some end up losing their babies or their lives in the process of being real women. The home health aide should practice attentive listening to understand why the client believes in what they hold fast. Personal biases should be relegated to the side. 6. Common Reactions to Illness Slash Disability It is important for the home health aide student to be prepared in dealing with the reaction of the client and family on their condition or illness. The elderly, convalescent, disabled, and infants may not be able to perform certain duties. Additionally, their condition may not allow them to generate income. This means that they are dependent on others for service and financial support. If the financial burden is very high on the family, family constraints can occur. Some families have insurance and get the relief. Some family members may not be willing to give service for fear of contracting the disease or other reasons like dedication to job or just not being able to cope with the stress of a loved one that is dependent. The burden of taking care of the client may be left to one person. As the family gives support to the client, they develop emotional, psychological, and physical needs. They may end up with limited time to take care of themselves. The challenge emerging from the home health care can cause depression to the patient and family. Demands for more resources and time can be tiring. Moreover, taking care of the patient could be very demanding and cause stress. If the patient does not show any improvement after the services of the home health agency have been employed, anxiety may crop in for lack of progress. They may live in worry, lose self-esteem, and start experiencing moments of grief because of the client's condition. If stress on the part of the client and their family is not managed well, they could end up in destructive behaviors. The client may attempt to withhold from treatment. The family may ignore their responsibility and become hostile, or on the other extreme, become overprotective. Home health environment where working relations are constrained and the family is fully or partially withdrawn from giving support may become stressed. Good relationship between a client and their family facilitate creating a complementary environment for home care. Assessing the needs of the client and that of the family will inform the plan when giving service. The home health aide should evaluate the most important and the less significant needs and give priority according to the needs. It is necessary to give the family and the client relevant information that can help them cope with the situation. Getting them to increase their knowledge about the circumstances will give them a reason for negative reactions. Family members who feel overburdened by the demands of the resources could seek alternatives, such as insurance. They can be referred to a program that educates and provides support for people with similar health needs. In the case where one of the family members is overburdened with the responsibilities, arrangements can be made to reduce the burden. The family can request support from other family members to get economic relief resulting from the conditions of the client. There is need to treat depression and stress to facilitate good health. Training on how to deal with the special need of the client can be given. Engaging in a program will facilitate an opportunity for the family and client to share with others and reduce the chances of getting stressed. Diongas et al. 2010
page 67. 7. Description of basic body functions and changes that should be reported. Basic body functions can be explained by understanding the functions of the organs of the body. The integumentary system is responsible for normalizing temperature of the body, generate hormones, and support the sensory organs. Skeletal system facilitates body movements, stores blood cells, and minerals. Muscular organs give the body posture, warmth, and enables movement. The nervous system enables communication and control between the surrounding and the body. Endocrine body functions include generation and distribution of hormones to the blood. Circulatory system distributes immunity and required substances to different parts of the body. The lymphatic system facilitates transportation of fluids in the body. The respiratory system's basic function is to excrete carbon dioxide and inhale oxygen. The digestion enables the body to transform food into nutrients and excretes the unwanted waste from the body. Urinary organs remove waste and create a balance between acid and electrolytes with water. Reproductive organs are responsible for generating sex cells and allowing transfer as well as fertilization to produce new offspring. The home health aide should ensure that they report any changes that threaten the life of the client. This may include persistent respiratory difficulties, frequent falls, and reduced level of consciousness that cannot be explained. They should report when the blood sugar is very high despite medication. Similarly, very high blood pressure or very low blood pressure. Drug reactions must also be reported for the physician to make adjustments. The home health aide should make it a routine to report to the home health care agency the client's progress. Birchenol, 2012, page 61. 8. Diseases and Disorders Common in the Healthcare Clients There are diseases and disorders that HHAs should be aware of because they are common in home health care. The elderly people complain of dementia. Dementia is characterized by impaired cognition and loss of memory. The elderly demonstrates neurological disorders. Neurological disorders signs can include pain in the muscle, especially when making movement. The elderly may suffer from incontinence. Symptoms of incontinence are loss of control of the bladder. Another common disease in the elderly is cardiovascular disease. Some may experience a heart attack, cardiac arrest, or high blood pressure. The arthritis is another disease common in home care. Signs of arthritis include pain in the ankle, knee, feet, wrist, hip, hands, back, spine, neck, and shoulder. Elderly have challenges with their vision and hearing. Their vision becomes blurred and they may require one to talk loud enough so that they can hear. Shouting is avoided. The vision problems could have been caused by glaucoma or muscular degeneration. Some elderly clients have diabetes. Signs and symptoms include blood glucose that is high, sweating, and blurred vision. Some have sleeping disorders. The elderly may have osteoporosis. Osteoporosis makes bones break easily and takes a long time to heal and cause injuries and sprains. Other clients may have lung disease, which causes them to breathe with difficulty. Skin disorders are common in home health care. Skin disorder signs include irritation of the skin, rashes, and sensitive skin. Somers, 2010, page 25. Cancer is another disease prevalent in home care. Cancer is an abnormal proliferation of cells that can affect any part of the body. In any cancerous cell, there is growth without control. There are various forms of cancer. Others are gender-based. The client could suffer from cognitive disorders. It could be in the form of delirium syndrome. The symptoms include disturbed conscience, disorganized thoughts, and agitation.
9. Common Emotional and Spiritual Needs A terminally ill client, together with their family, have different emotional and spiritual needs. They have different abilities to cope with the situation. While some may be in denial, others have accepted reality. A majority of the terminally ill patients go through the grieving process. They first deny the news and isolate themselves. They experience anger and strong emotions of despair. They quickly realize the reality and begin to bargain on the life in their thoughts. They then enter into a depression. Finally, they accept the reality and begin to give their best in the remaining days. The home health aide understands that the family undergoes Kubler-Ross stages of grief, which has the acronym DABDA. D. Denial. A. Anger. B. Bargaining. D. Depression. A. Acceptance. The terminally ill and the family agonize and feel pain for the anticipated loss. The terminally ill experience pain from the illness. They have feelings of helplessness for not being able to accomplish all they wanted in life. The patient may go into depression because they are not able to meet their responsibilities. The family members become depressed after seeing that they cannot restore the health of their loved ones. Birchenall and Strait, 2003, page 11. The interventions for emotions include allowing the patient and the family to talk to a therapist or counselor about their experience. One can facilitate and organize for the family to spend a lot of time with each other. They can be encouraged to share their thoughts and feelings. In their discussion, they can be helped to deal with anxiety and fear. This can be done by showing them how to relax. They can exercise breathing exercises. Their concerns on medication and treatment for comfort should be conversed. Allowing the client time to express their feelings is very important. Bottled emotions do not help with coping. Venting emotions helps to relax the muscles and helps clients to explore ways they can serve as coping strategies. Spiritual support involves inviting the client's religious leader for spiritual guidance. The client and family can be encouraged to get the support from their clergy. Interacting with the clergy will create avenues for asking questions and obtaining answers about spiritual matters. The religious leader can provide spiritual support, which is effective in dealing with anxiety. Stanworth, 2003, page 30. 10. Conclusion The client needs someone to help them bathe, dress, do self-grooming, control infections, take medication, get help in mobility, manage pain, have a safe environment, and get help with cleaning. They need company and encouragement as emotional support. The home health aide should follow the care plan in providing service. The client and family, just like every other individual, follow Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which include the physiological, safety, belonging, esteem, and self-actualization needs. Culture, lifestyle, and experience of client and family motivate their decision-making and perception about the condition of the client. Illness and disability cause financial constraints and need for service. Support helps the client and family deal with constraints. Changes such as unconsciousness, persistent high blood sugar, and persistent difficulty in breathing should be reported. Many clients in home care have dementia, neurological disorders, incontinence, cardiovascular disease, arthritis, poor vision, hearing difficulties, diabetes, osteoporosis, sleeping disorders, cancer, and cognitive disorders. The client and family need encouragement when the patient is terminally ill. They can be given support by their religious leaders. Sample Home Health Aid Questions 21. Blank is the process of exchanging information with others. A. Looking. B. 
recreation. C. Communication. D. Interpretation. 22. Always report combative behaviors of clients to your A. Parents. B. Client's friend. C. Friend. D. Supervisor. 23. All of the following are some barriers to communication except A. Client hears and understands you clearly. B. Client is difficult to understand. C. Asking why. D. Client speaking in a different language. 24. Which of the following questions would you ask a client for adequate clarifications? A. Did you sleep last night? B. Did he rape you? C. Tell me about your sleep last night. D. Is exercise good? 25. Reasons for documentation include A. It guarantees clear and complete communication. B. It provides up-to-date record of the status of a client. C. Documentation protects you and the employer from liability. D. All of the above. 26. File an incident report when one of the following incidents occurs. A. Your client performs an exercise. B. Your client falls. C. When a patient is safe. D. When a client lies on the right side of the body. 27. The process of removing pathogens or state of being free from pathogens is referred to as A. Medical asepsis. B. Plasmodiasis. C. Sepsis. D. Toxoplasmosis. 28. Blank is where the pathogen lives and grows. A. House. B. Ecosystem. C. Landscape. D. Reservoir. 29. An uninfected person who could get sick or infected is referred to as a A. Portal of entry. B. Causative agent. C. Susceptible host. D. Sepsis. 30. If blood or body fluid spills on fabrics, such as carpets and clothes, A. Use alcohol to clean it. B. Use commercial disinfectants to clean it. C. Clean with bleach. D. None of the above. 31. Blank is a federal government agency that issues information to protect the health of individuals and communities. A. Health firm. B. World Health Organization. C. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention. D. Individual Co-Operations. 32. One of the following is not included as one of the measures of standard precautions. A. Clean a client's blood without wearing gloves. B. Wash your hands before putting on gloves. C. Wear gloves if you may come in contact with body fluids. D. Wear a disposable gown that is resistant to body fluid. 33. Blank refers to washing hands with water and soap or other detergents that contain an antiseptic agent. A. Hand antisepsis. B. Hand rinsing. C. Protocols. D. None of the above. 34. Equipment that helps protect employees from serious injuries or illnesses resulting from contact with workplace hazards is called A. Personal protective equipment. B. Standard precaution. C. Hospital policy. D. Health machineries. 35. Personal protective equipment includes the following except one. A. Masks. B. Goggles. C. Gowns. D. Needles. 36. One of the following is not an airborne disease. A. Measles. B. Tuberculosis. C. Boil. D. Chickenpox. 37. Droplets can be created by A. Coughing. B. Sneezing. C. Laughing.
D. All of the above. 38. An example of a droplet disease is the A. Rash B. Scabies C. Mumps D. Constipation 39. MRSA stands for A. Menstrual Reluctant Stage of Action B. Men Rehabilitation System Activities C. Methicillin Resistant Staphylococcus Auras D. None of the above 40. Droplet precautions include A. Wearing a face mask during care B. Restricting visits from uninfected people C. An infected client covering his nose and mouth with a tissue while sneezing D. All of the above 41. The way the parts of the body work together whenever you move is referred to as A. Body mechanics B. Movement C. Body structure D. Matrix 42. When you stand, your weight is centered in A. Elbows B. Your arms C. Your pelvis D. Fibula 43. Disorientation means confusion about A. Person B. Place C. Time D. All of the above 44. Burns can be caused by one of the following A. Cold water B. Hand shaking C. Dry heat D. Waxing floors 45. Employees' responsibilities for infection control include the following A. Follow standard precautions B. Take advantage of the free hepatitis B vaccination C. Immediately report any exposure you have to infection or blood. D. All of the above. 46. One of the following is not a guideline to guide against fire. A. Stay in or near the kitchen when anything is cooking. B. Discourage careless smoking and smoking in bed. C. Turn on heaters when no one is home. D. Do not leave dryer on when you leave the house. 47. To ensure travel safety, A. Avoid planning your route. B. Use turn signals. C. Encourage distractions from friends. D. Drive without a seatbelt. 48. Factors that raise the risk for falls include A. Clutter. B. Slippery floors. C. Poor lighting. D. All of the above. 49. Blank is emergency care given immediately to an injured person. A. Exercise. B. Head stretching. C. 911. D. First aid. 50. The first signs of insulin reaction include one of the following. A. Pneumonia. B. Heart failure. C. Constipation. D. Nervousness.